Welcome to Focus on Niger Delta exclusive interview with Baraman Voice, where issues have been discussed for the progress of the Niger Delta and Nigeria large. Today, uh, Focus on Niger Delta, we are going to talk about a very important issue that is affecting the Niger Delta people, the job people, and Nigeria at large, where the forthcoming IYC election is at hand. We have a personality in our midst, a very youth, young youth activist who has been in the forefront of issues here and there in the Niger Delta region. Today, his ambition is going to unfold, and uh, we are going to see more of the issues that uh, needs to be done in order to uh, give uh, a new coloration, a new face to our region. And uh, on this note, I want to bring in our big uh, man from Calabari Kingdom, uh, Mr. Nangi Ubu, who happened to be a candidate for the forthcoming IYC election, presidential aspirant. You are welcome to Baramantu Voice. Thank you very much. Good morning, viewers. Uh, actually, um, uh, Mr. Nangi is um, a, a medical uh, um, uh, health officer who has been in the forefront of health issues. At this critical time that Nigeria is facing a lot of issues, he can actually address those issues on health-wise. <laughs> but we are not going to look at those uh, issues today. But uh, issues that affect us, we as Niger Delta people, we as Nigerians, we as Ijo people. The IYC is around the corner. Mr. Nangi. Can you please tell us more about yourself? All right. Um, good morning, viewers. My name is Ma Obuye Nangi Obu. I'm from Krakrama Community in Asaito Local Government of River State, Calabari precisely. So I'm an Ijo man, complete core Ijo. Um, well, I have my bachelor's in human anatomy from the University of Medigree. I have my master's in public health from Anglerowski University uh, in the United Kingdom. I also have um, a certificate in cognitive behavioral therapy, as well as another certificate in uh, clinical psychology. Um, I've been trained in other areas and other fields. Uh, currently, I would like to keep one part of me um, secret, you know, but I've been trained on another field. So I work in the field of engineering today. And um, so I work um, not as an engineer, but I work in the field of engineering. So, so that's by the way. Yeah, yeah, thank that's, you, thank that's, you very that's much. What I see through your profile is quite uh, uh, intimidating for uh, some persons, and uh, it's good to have uh, a young man with different fields. You are a person of, from the health sector to another sector. From you know, it is very interesting. So um, today, you are <coughs> a frontline aspirant contesting for the president of IYC. Yeah. Please, what are your plans for the Joe Youth? all over okay um first of all we we've been profiled and um, badly profiled at that um, if you go to the united states or the developed world the western world today you find out that um, racism is subtle um, which is spelled as subtle but what i mean is subtle like it's it's not it's not really there is covert it's not overt it's not dominant but it's there, they, 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 they show some sort of racism on people. That's how Egypt people have been badly profiled in this country. By the Nigerian state, as we speak, a whole lot is going on. And um, when they talk about Ijo youth, they see you as a criminal, they see you as a mad person, they see you as a militant, they see you as um, a good for nothing somebody. Like um, you are a nobody, in fact. And in fact, I would say you're a classless citizen. I mean, uh, we are classless citizens, say, you know, as Ijo people. So we have a lot of issues that we need to address. Now, um, unfortunately, some of us, and over the years, uh, have also not acted in the way and manner we ought to. So as a result, the profiling is now like very good for us. So first of all, one of the things I'm coming to do as president of council is what I call perception management. We need to first of all manage the perception. I'll give you a very typical example. The most, the most, I say this with all sense of respect and sincerity, the most corrupt, the most not secure or, uh, you know, volatile state, the most restive state in Nigeria is Lagos State. Lagos. I don't know if people can spell Lagos. Lagos that we river. That is the most volatile state we have in this country. But you know what? The Lagos media try to downplay on what is really going on. 
and um, the Lagos media tries to also vilify what is you know the beauty Kilimanjaro out of the little more hill that happens here in the Niger Delta so what it means is that if as Ijo people we have some sort of um, you know fracas maybe we're arguing or something the Lagos media can escalate it and say oh militants or something and so they give reasons for um, the IOCs or the oil companies not to come here and they can stay there and it, you know it's, it's, it's indeed it beats me like why these guys feel very comfortable staying in Lagos and the den of criminality the den of everything and yet here that is very safe for people to stay they say it's not so this is one issue it's a very big issue and it's of great concern to somebody like me as we speak people may not like this we have full knees herdsmen are living within us even in the joland they come in the name of Merua, especially in in, in Yenagua. Yenagua is, is 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 a bombshell as we speak they are the keke drivers they are everything i'm not saying um these people should not come here and walk now even bunkering that we have been accused of that is our art as a job people these Fulanese have also infiltrated us and they are the ones doing bunkering if you go to places like potakot we call it no fire fuel and whatsoever they are being sold by these Fulani headsmen but you know what they claim not to know how to speak english but they have these transistor radio with them always tuned to channels that you and i don't understand what they are saying so when it happens they only know when it wants to happen and what is that thing that wants to happen they want to invade us and this is not hoopla but i'm just trying to tell you what's going on the uniform men that are being posted here to the niger delta are full of news they're in our waterways they are the ones doing bunkering they're the ones that allow these people to do all whatsoever they desecrate the land they cause the spoliation and exploitation of everything so we are in a deep shit. that's another another aspect in terms of security if you look at things the Nigerian states don't and they do, they will never allow us to sit in a, you know on the dialogue table and let's begin to cross pollinate ideas on how best we are supposed to be seen as partners in development in terms of this country. But what they see us as, we're militants. So whatever that happens, Abuja sends airstrike, they send warship and gunboats and trucks, and more tanks to come fight what? So this is now war on at the level of Abuja. It predates this current administration. This has always been this the style. Very recently, our big brother, our boss, Kisli Kimebradi Yakuku, said something. And I'm just I'm looking at it that for me, to my mind, that is one of the new um, phase of the struggle, if we want to call it, which is amnesties, instead of giving people amnesty. For example, amnesty is, is a misused word. Our boys were not criminals. They were fighting against something, injustice in their land, just like our father and our leader Boro fought. And they continued in that. Well, there are some sort of desecration of the land and all that. But allow us, we are, we are, today as we speak, in Wari here, in Portacourt, our kids are suffering from what we call cardiovascular heart disease. The reason is this, it's not because they smoke. It's not because they want to smoke. It's not because they have parents that smoke. But because they have what they call in the air, something that is now filled, the air is filled with what they call particulate matter. In local parlance, we call it soot, you know, soot. But also, bring it back again to pigeon, people call it black soot. It's pathology, but it's called soot. Now, this suit is not caused by your people. All of these companies that still, as we speak right now, they're still uh, uh, um, gas flaring. And there are laws that bars people from going into gas. You know, there are laws that there are alternative ways of also flaring gas and all of that. These things are not followed. As we speak, as we speak, they say we are the fourth largest ethnic nationality. Now, I'm, I keep asking people, how did they arrive at that? They just extrapolated figures using principles of logic to say if this should be this, then that should be that. So they gave us figures. Did they get to places like Ezetu? Did they get to places like Elim uh, Krakrama? Did they get to places like Ikbogbene? Did they get to places like Kurutie, Kunukunuma, Bikumo? Did they get to places like uh, Oproza or some other parts within, you know, far, far, far Ijo communities and other Niger Delta communities? They just come to worry, come to Pothakot, come to, you know, uh, uh, Asaba or wherever, all of these cities, and they say, okay, from this point to this point, they do that EAD call the elimination area demarcation, right? And they extrapolate the figures and say, okay, these people are these. And okay, because some of us can speak Yoruba, some of us can speak Hausa, some of us can speak Igbo, and all of that. So we possibly they will give you options how many languages do you speak. So once you put that, they now extrapolate it for the Wazobias. So the Wazobians always stay wherever they stay to do whatsoever. As we speak today, the Biafrans just very recently, yesterday, I'll be there before they have uh, also 
they said Potakot is now their, what is it called, um, their capital. This is just, um, you know, it, it's, it's a joke. But, but I'm not against it, but it, it's, it's indeed um, discombobulating and indeed it's downright unprincipled for them to, to do that. Our father, our leader, Isaac Adakaburu, declared the Niger Delta Republic even before Ujuku conjured the idea of um, uh, Biafra. So this is, for me, it offends sensibilities of a jaw. So we need to begin to articulate this issue. There's so many other issues. Let me give you another recent thing. The NLNG, you know, we've said oh, train one to train six was there, now train seven is here. And the train seven have got three phases. It's called the EPC, the engineering, the procurement, and the construction. Saipem is handling all of these. And Saipem said the, the engineering works or fabrication or whatsoever would be done in a place called Banana Island in Lagos. I don't, like, I don't understand what's really going on. So it, the, there is no path in Delta State, River State, even Edo State, Ondo State, Akwa Basibom State, and any of the Niger Delta States that gives them all of these things. As we speak today, go to Lagos. Dangote Refinery is having the mindset of which they've already trunked it. They are trunking pipes from the Niger Delta to power a refinery in Lagos, the unsafe, the most unsafe city we have in Nigeria. And why can't that thing be in Port Harcourt? Why can't it be in a place like in Delta or in any of Bayelsa or anywhere? Ijo people are not saying anything. Our coastal roads were begging. Just very recently, I even had to engage somebody in Bayelsa because the road, the, the, uh, what is it called? This our east-west road is so bad and all. So, so if I'm here, when, when we talk, sometimes it makes me, it's cringe-worthy. Like, I feel very sad about our state and how we were. And this is the reason why whenever I speak with Ijo youth, I tell them, I don't know the type of IYC you want and the type of precedent you're looking out for, right? But the thing is, we need to bring in serious-minded people, not businessmen. And a lot of people, the pool of people I see that wants to be president are just businessmen. That's the point. Uh, thank you very much because uh, in the course of explaining the issues that affect the job nation as well as uh, because you talked about perception management, uh, you know, um, when you look at the Niger Delta region, particularly from the joy extractions, these are, there is this perception that uh, the, these people are militant, these people are, uh, they cause havoc here and there, they mm. are sea pirates and all that. And you make reference of uh, Lagos, how the media were able to project and cover up some of those issues that is happening over there. Now, when you talked about perception management, what are those steps that you think could be possible, could we look into in order to manage the perception that the, the, the name they have already branded the people in this uh, area? And uh, coming as IYC president, if elected, this perception management, how do you intend to go about doing it? Well, first of all, I'll, I'll use myself as a very typical example. If you want the best of schools, to the glory of God, I've been opportune to study. I started in the north first, University of Medjugorje, before I also went to the United Kingdom. I've served, I've been um, student union president, I've, been, I've led River State students to the highest and highest of level. I have been Nance president in the United Kingdom, I would say. Okay. So now all of these, I'm just trying to say, so... I did all of these things without joining any court or saying I'm a courtist or being, you know, um, quiz for any court activity or whatsoever. That is, for me, I'm one very good example. I'm not a classical one, but a very good example. We have thousands and also millions of better Ijo youth than myself out there that are not known. So one of the simplest ways we can manage the perception is, first of all, to engage these people. Now, if elected, one of the things I intend to do is to organize the first GMOU summit. Then, whilst I'm doing that, we're going to get the CGS, what I call CGS means Community Governance System, across the Niger Delta, involved in all of this. The oil and gas company, the UN, the Ministry of Petroleum Resources, and every other human being, or government parastatals, or M M MDA, or whatsoever, should be involved and will be involved. We're going to sit back again and review some of these GMOUs. Now, by the time you begin to engage these companies in the right way that you're supposed to, instead of going there to do big, hey, hey, give Oscar, give me money, 50 million, 100 million, buy a house for me and all of that, you're also managing perception. If IYC used to do that yesterday and IYC stops doing that today, I work, I'm not saying I have all the monies, but I'm comfortable to the glory of God. Yes, I can feed myself, I can feed my family, my lovely wife, and I may not have everything I want, but I don't need the IYC to survive. Do you understand? But we need to. So one way is attitude. You work it. Then another way is that the media, like I was say, well, we're on live TV. Certain things ought not to be said to the outside world anyway. But, but the media, we also have our media. If you look at 
Punch, Vanguard, and all of these guys, they are owned by Niger Deltans. But I wouldn't say they failed, but they have their agenda. Even channels. John Momo, I know him to be a Niger Deltan, but I don't think he is. You know, because they do their thing. Uh, this is not here to bring anybody down. But So the point is we need to be, we'll start you know, projecting people like you like the Baramato voice, to sell our actual stories. Because if you allow somebody begin to sell your story for you, he or she sells the story the way he or she wants the story to go, they will tailor it. So nobody should tailor us. The first things, one of the first things first, we will not allow them tailor us, tailor our history, tailor our stories, tailor our struggle, we will fight against that. That's one of the ways we'll manage the perception. When they try not to you know, when, when we don't give them the opportunity to do that, then I think uh, we'll begin to manage that. Then we'll begin to also encourage our local medias from the Niger Delta. The idea is not to fight Nigeria. We don't, we're not at war with anybody, but we're Niger Deltans. And if there's any Nigerian that should be called a first-class Nigerian, should be the average Niger Deltan. Niger Deltans are the best. We are the big brother. We have given so much to this country, especially your people, and we've had nothing. If, if, if I will try to expose or no, no, break down what has really happened in the, um, the so-called amnesty program, you see how these guys have used us and how they've dumped us. And because of us, this current administration went ahead to create what they call the Northeast Development Commission. What for? What is that for? The, that's like for me, it's a fax smile of the NDDC. The NDDC contractors are northerners. Even the Amnesty Office and essay essaying his fellow essay. That's what I call. This is this is this is for me. It's it's unthinkable. And Niger Delta's job people see we have a lot of issues. I don't I don't want to certain things when I'm on I'm on TV uh, and I get very uh, I don't want to be dis I want to be dispassionate about certain things. But I get too passionate about certain things when I talk. I feel like I want to cry because I don't know where Ijoy youth are and I don't know what type of IYC we want. So we need to begin to discuss issues. And for me, to my mind, the type of IYC we should be looking out for should be issue-based IYC, not IYC that comes to Baogele alone. We'll Baogele, as president of council, I will not Baogele until I'm, I'm able to conquer these few things up. If these things are not done, no Ogele for me, to Ba. That's because I see myself as failed. But we need to push and we need to reawaken the struggle. We need to really tell these people that we understand and even know more than them. You talk about directional dealers, we have them better. And let me tell you, the Nigerian state should be aware today, if we want to blow up all stations, we don't, we're not going to do it the other way we did it the last time. We now have the art and the expertise we have it today. That I was just about, the idea is not to blow up anything, but when it comes for that, we will do, if they push us to the wall, if you push an average soldier to the wall, what happens? He reacts. They push people like us to the wall. I am not a cold person, but listen, don't bring out the madness in an average German. I'm a joy youth, and as an enjoy youth, I'm not happy about what's going on. So, perception management is key, but like I said, one of the few and simplest ways we can do that is by our actions. You understand? And also getting the right people to partner with us. We need to partner. We need to begin to reach out to other ethnic nationalities, minorities, and all of that. We are not minorities. Ijo people belong to the big three, the first three. So I don't know in, in no particular order, the first, the biggest ethnic nationality in Nigeria is Ijo nation, Ijo people. We are spanned across states, and we have our figures. We are even more than 50 million people. They should, they should, it's my word against their word. Let's sit down and begin to now go into the real issue. What do you think is the major challenge facing the Joy Youth Council? What do you think is the way forward? Um, the major challenge of some, I, I, I don't want to lay claim to, I'm not the hub, the only hub of knowledge, um, but. Um, I've also allied most of them, and my fears are well allied, I would say. I've mentioned a whole lot, but um, in-house, certain things I'm not comfortable talking about because I want to do perception management, and I'm not going to sell out my people, you know, but so certain things I wouldn't say. Uh, I'll try not to say it, but you know, in terms of IYC, that's a joint council, um, every election year and day is like Christmas Day for some Ijoyuts. So uh, that's an idea. I'm not going to go into that, but I think uh, I'll leave it at that for that. Now, we, some of us also misconstrue the real or the true essence of the struggle. The struggle, you know, we and Ijo people in this country are the only first or the only group, not just first, the only group I know or nation, ethnic nationality that have taken up arms 
against the Nigerian state. Each people, our father, our leader, Boro, did not do that because it was a trigger-hungry soldier. I, did, I made a video of that on Boro's